Okay, let's graph some of these quadratics. Now, if you did not watch the last video, uh, the introduction to quadratics, you're going to need to do that before this is going to make sense. So make sure you go back and watch that. But let's just jump in. Now, first thing that we're going to have to do to graph is to kind of find the, the vertex value. So in order to find the vertex value, you got to go negative b over 2a. And in order to do that, we're going to need to first figure out what a, b, and c are. So a, b, and c. a is the number in front of x squared b is the number in front of x, c is the number by itself. So that's what I've got. So let's go negative b over 2a. So negative negative 4 over 2 times 2. Um, that's going to be 4 over 4, which is going to be equal to 1. Okay, so that's the x value of the vertex. And remember, the vertex is going to be the middle of our graph, the middle of our parabola. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this x value of the vertex and put it into the middle of the table over here, okay? Now, let's just count up and count down for our x's, 2 and 3, and counting down, that's going to be 0 and negative 1, all right? Now, let's go ahead and sub each one of these numbers in for x over here in our equation and see what our y value is, all right? So maybe I'll start with 1 first. Not nice easy number to start with. If I put in 1 for x, if I put a 1 right here for x and a 1 right here, that's going to be 2 minus 4 plus 3. Okay, and you can use your calculator if you want. 2 minus 4 plus 3. And actually, it's pretty easy to use your calculator. One of the things I highly suggest actually must do this. If you're putting this in your calculator, let me write it up here how you'd write this in. 2 parenthesis 1 parenthesis squared minus 4 parenthesis 1 parenthesis plus 3. Okay? If you just punch that into your calculator, it's going to give you the right answer. And in this case, the right answer is 1. Okay? Now, go back. If you did your calculator, go back and change those 1s to our next x value, which is 0. And if you do that, you're going to get um, the answer is going to be 3. Okay, then let's, let's fill in the rest of this table. So if you put negative 1 in for x, so if, if you change each one of these to a negative 1, um, that's going to be 2 plus 4 is 6 plus 3 is going to be 9. Um, just I want to make sure uh, 2 plus 4 is 6, plus 3 is 9. That is correct. Okay, now, if we go back, let's do the bottom now. So put 2 in for those values of x where you had the negative 1. And so if I put 2 in, it's just going to look like this in your calculator. And let's see, that's going to be 4, 8, minus 8 is 0, plus 3 is going to be 3. And now put in 3. So if I put 3 in for those x's in my calculator, let's see what I get. That's going to be 9. 18 minus 12 is 6. Plus 3 is going to be 9. Okay, so now we've got that table filled out. All we have to do now is graph these points and then connect the dots. So I've got negative 1, 9, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9. Negative 1, 9. And then I've got 0, 3 and 1, 1, and 2, 3, and 3, 9, and then connect these points real nice and neat. And we have our parabola, just like that. And just like we knew, just like we knew it would be, this is going to be symmetric. There's an axis of symmetry going right down the middle there. and just like we thought, that middle point, remember we found the vertex first? Negative 1, 1. That's this point right here, right in the smack dab middle of that graph, just like we said it would be. All right, let's do another one. Let's graph this. So first thing we have to do is find A, B, and C. A is the number in front of x squared, B is the number in front of x, C is the number by itself. So now we'll go negative B over 2A. So that's going to be negative 2 over 2 times negative 1. 
and that's negative 2 over negative 2. Looks like this one's going to be a positive 1 also. That goes, that's our vertex. That's the x value of the vertex going right there, right in the middle of our table. So let's count up and down, 2 and 3, 0 and 1. By the way, you might be thinking that these numbers are going to be the same every time because both examples so far, that 1's been in the middle not the case okay not the case just so happens just randomly happens that that's how these two have been all right so let's go ahead and put this in so we're going to go in our calculator negative and let's start with whoops let's start with one negative one squared plus two times one plus three and if we punch all of that into our calculator this is going to give us a Four. Okay, four. Now, if we change all those ones to zeros to fill in this table, um, that's just going to give us a three. And if we change all those zeros to negative ones, uh, negative one minus two, that's going to give us a zero. Okay? Now, I know I'm going through these pretty fast, but you can use your calculator to do these. It's no problem. Um, let's finish this up. Put a 2 in our parentheses where the x's go. So that's going to be negative 4 plus 4 is 0 plus 3 is 3. And now let's put a 9 in there. Or, I'm sorry, a 3 in there. So that's going to be negative 9 plus 6 plus 3 is going to be a 0. Okay, so let's graph this. Negative 1, 0, 0, 3, 1, 4, 2, 3, and 3, 0. Let's see what we have. All right. Looking good. So let's talk about some things we knew. We knew that it was going to be a parabola, so there was going to be an axis of symmetry where it's the exact same on both sides. Perfect. We knew that this point right there, that's the middle. That was the vertex. And if we look back up here, that was the vertex right where we found it, right? Negative B over 2A. All right, so that's kind of neat. Let's talk about something else we knew. From the intro video, we knew that if A was positive, it opened up. But in this case, A was negative, so it goes down. All right, so that's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Let's look at this one. First of all, find A, B, and C. A is negative 2. B is 6. C is negative 1. So negative B over 2A. Okay, so this is going to be negative 6 over negative 4. That's going to be 6 fourths. Ooh, ooh. All right, as a decimal, this is going to be 1.5. So that goes right here in the middle. This is not going to be an easy one to graph. All right, now let's count up from up and down from 1.5 again. So if I go up 1, if I go up a whole one, that's going to be 2.5 and 3.5. But nobody said I have to go up a whole number. So let's not go up. I, we have to use 1.5 because that's the vertex. Negative b over 2a told us that. But let's just make that a 2 and a 3. Okay? So 1.5, 2, and 3. And then let's go down. The previous number between one, before 1 1.5, previous integer is 1 and then zero. Okay, so if it gives us a decimal there, use the decimal, you have to use that. You do have to use it, but then let's just go up and down to the next closest integer, all right? So let's punch this into our calculators, negative two, parenthesis. If I start with 1.5 squared plus six times 1.5 minus one. Okay, I am going to use my calculator for this one. So I've got negative 2, and then I'm going to start with 1.5 squared plus 6 times 1.5 minus 1, and that's going to give me 3.5. All right, now I'm going to go back up and change those to 1s. 
Change my 1.5s to 1s. And let's see what we get. This time I'm going to get a 3. And when I put 0 in there, I'm going to get a negative 1. Okay. Now let's try this again. Let's go back up and fill in the rest of this table. Put in 2s. And I'm going to get 3. And go back up and put in 3s. And I'm going to get negative 1. All right, so let's graph these points. 0, negative 1, 1, 3, 1.5 is 3.5, 2 is 3, and 3 is negative 1. So if I graph this, hey, you know what? That actually turned out. Once again, I can see right here, right through the middle, an axis of symmetry where it's the same on both sides. I see that the vertex right there at 1.5, 3.5, that matches up with what we knew it was going to be when we did the negative b over 2a. And also, this is pointing down just like our a value told us it would. All right, so that is pretty awesome. Something else that's pretty awesome. I don't know if you've noticed this. But do you notice how there's symmetry in our y values in our table? Like up here, the negative 1 and negative 1 and 3 and 3 and 3.5. Have you noticed that that's the way it's been through all of these up here? 0, 0, 3, 3, and 4 in the middle. Right here, 9, 9, 3, 3, and 1 in the middle. So if we're doing these right, that's actually going to be the case every time unless we get some crazy number for the vertex, all right? So that's a good way for you to check yourself and make sure you're doing it right, okay? So if you need some more help, watch this video again, but I know you got it, I know you can do this.